The Future History of Energy and Transportation Documenting the paradigm shift from the era of oil and internal combustion, to the era of robotics By Julian Cox Narrated by the author with the aid of an artificial intelligence Chapter 24 The Future History of Energy and Transportation Here we will take what we have been discussing and reduce it to some actionable conclusions, essentially modeling assumptions, of import to industry, investors, policymakers, and vehicle purchasers. Authors note, as a writer lacking in prose of greater elegance, in order to craft sentences without excessive modifiers for probability, thus short enough to be intelligible at all, future outcomes clearly predicted by this work are treated in the definitive. The rationale is laid out with color and nuance to be challenged, explored and thought through independently, throughout the preceding chapters. Authors note, the objective of this work has never been to pander to credulity nor conform to a popular narrative in search of approval, the subject matter of marketing. That would have been self-serving. The objective here is to serve the reader, by getting it right at all costs, irrespective of the consequences of saying out loud, that which some might prefer when unsaid. In times of change, the future is not a popularity contest. The core drivers of the future are held to be predicated on emergent choices that markets will adopt freely, or opt to abandon for lack of need thereof. Thus the following is an analysis of market forces of opportunity, price and availability and not the edicts of politicians or vested interests of any stripe, the most powerful of whom can at best, or worse, influence but not dictate market outcomes. On the contrary, the most powerful and influential in the coming decades will likely not be the heirs of great men whose great fortune was to anticipate the oil era, but rather to be delivered up as a product of market anticipation, the time for which is, now. Market anticipation is contrary to popular belief, by definition, and is thus egregiously uncomfortable. It has to be in order to be useful. So let's do that then. When contemplating the auto industry, this is a comprehensive list of everything necessary to make a car. 1. A battery or equivalent rechargeable device, a starter battery is a battery. 2. One or more electric motor and a generator or combined motor generators. 3. An inverter or some other electronic controller, currently required on all production road vehicles even if merely to drive subsystems. 4. The rest of the car that includes running gear, bodywork, interior, heating ventilation and air conditioning, exterior lights and so on. 5. A sensor suite, antennae, transceivers, visual displays and audio. 6. A computer or computers. 7. Software to tie all of the above together into a functional unit, ideally with an eye to full autonomy. 8. Network services to tie all of the above together to serve humans. 9. Somewhere to service it, augment it and clean it. 10. Energy generation, providing the means to prepare a vehicle to deliver mileage. 11. Raw materials, supply chain, plant, production machinery, the energy for this, intellectual property and systems of people to build and manage all of the above. If it is not definitively on the list above, for example liquid fuel, an engine or a matching transmission, the chances are that production assets dedicated to that item will flip to a liability, in the face of competition focused exclusively on part or all of the list. Meaning, just as fuel and an engine flips from historically critical to customer value as the means of obtaining transportation, to no customer need in the eyes of an EV purchaser, the engine commanding no monetary value in that transaction, so too the engine production line will command no asset value, at the point the profitability of that line folds, Meanwhile any outstanding lending and other fiduciary commitments tied to that line, its workforce and suppliers, persists. Result, where once stood an asset, there stands a liability. This potentiality is readily visible in the many hundreds of thousands of new vehicle customers that have abandoned internal combustion and are reporting record, mid to high 90% rates of satisfaction with their vehicle purchase, despite having been served exclusively with items 1 to 11 on the list and with nothing that is absent from it, including an engine. Perfecting everything on the list is a significant and ongoing challenge for any market competitor, particularly in relation to battery design, as discussed in the previous chapter, an analog of engine design, 
software development, especially in relation to battery management in the broadest sense, and autonomy, systems integration, concerning a product optimized on numerous performance parameters as well as cost, manufacturing efficiency and capacity, including battery production, and financial capital. For large incumbent auto OEMs, some of these challenges might appear at first glance to offer a competitive moat, namely considerable experience and manufacturing capacity as it relates to running gear, bodywork, vehicle interiors and systems integration, as well as financial capital. It might be tempting to assume that financial capital would yield a competitive advantage in obtaining excellence in the remainder of the list via hiring top talent, mergers and acquisitions and so on. Indeed it is possible for a large OEM to develop and demonstrate conceptual examples of compelling electric vehicles. Bringing these vehicles to market with features, performance and price aimed squarely at disrupting the mainstay of their own businesses, in order to challenge the advance of dedicated players who have nothing but upside and prospect for targeting the mainstay of their businesses for disruption, is the far greater challenge. While every large OEM has exciting plans for electrification and vehicle autonomy and many have made considerable funding commitments to pursue these, what is often overlooked, rarely discussed and never admitted, is the countervailing difficulty faced by OEMs, in disposing of legacy technology liabilities, items like engine production lines that are traditionally regarded as capital assets, underpinning an OEM's market value and its ability to collateralize debt. By far the single greatest asset to liability flip in prospect at the dawn of a broad auto market choice of an autonomous EV, is manually driven, internal combustion lease fleets, typically amounting to hundreds of billions of dollars per large 20th century OEM. At the first time of writing, 2016, 400,000 deposited customers, disclosed, were waiting in line for the world's first competitive mid-market EV, the Tesla Model 3, in preference to buying the products of incumbent auto industry players that were readily available and waiting on dealer lots. As another data point, Delphi Automotive, a leading supplier of automotive components announced plans to spin off its operations related to internal combustion, to focus on opportunities in electrification and vehicle autonomy. To quote Delphi CEO, Kevin Clark, Reuters May 2017, there's a whole element of the componentry of the car that Wall Street values at a lower level. Meaning componentry dedicated to internal combustion. Robert Bosch, another leading parts supplier sold off its starter motor and alternator business. Update 2021 a pre-production startup called Rivian that is seeking to bring electric vehicles to market, is headed for a stock market initial public offering at a valuation of $80 billion. A figure exceeding the market value of Ford or GM. Albeit a tenth of the market valuation of Tesla, whose market valuation exceeds the balance of the world's 20th century automakers combined. Already an industry exists for the mass export of used vehicles from developed markets to parts of Africa and elsewhere in a bid to prop up the domestic residual values of internal combustion vehicles by artificially limiting supply. North America and Europe at the time of writing exports roughly $5 billion per year of used vehicles to Nigeria alone. These phenomena are both indicative of, and contributory to instability in the traditional auto industry business model, even as sales and vehicle leasing approach all-time highs. Incipient liabilities of large 20th century automakers include, but are not limited to, large workforces, large lease and loan fleets of questionable residual value, typically multiples of market cap at risk of precipitous devaluation, pension commitments, aftercare, service parts and warranty commitments, dealership commitments, investor expectations and borrowing commitments, leveraged against items of questionable collateral value that are not on the list above, such as engine block forging and milling lines and assembly lines optimized for the installation of engines, exhaust systems, fuel systems and transmissions. The central theme of these liabilities is a necessity to maintain market share to support the overheads of these operations at enormous scale, while newcomers with an exclusive focus on new technologies, are able to compete adequately to keep their own lights on, long prior to amassing economies of scale to match. These newcomers are rewarded enormously for attracting fractional percentages of total market share while, unlike a large OEM, scaling their overhead safely behind an exponential demand curve for their new technology products, all the while, the new technology steadily matures in capability and economies of scale to meet the needs of a growing proportion of the market, in the general direction of 100% on account of improving cost efficiencies and inherent cost competitiveness. 
Never at any point along the adoption curve of a new technology is a market incumbent scale in a legacy technology advantageous, to intercept and defend any small percentage attrition when compared with the prospect of self-cannibalization, proportionate to its own scale. When now at last a newcomer, Tesla has proven the existence of a market for a new technology large enough for a legacy market incumbent to go all in to address it. At that point the newcomer has already solidified leadership in the new technology both in fact and in the eyes of the market. At that same juncture, the large incumbents are then suffering meaningful loss of market share, profits and reputation. Update, in Q1 2019, BMW's automotive division swung to a loss for the first time in a decade as car prices slumped. Earnings at the carmaker's main unit fell by 42% to 1.1 billion euros in the first quarter. Investors appalled that BMW had failed to develop a credible product to address Tesla gnawing away at BMW's market share and brand prestige, we're told BMW has 12 electric vehicles slated for market entry in 2025. This is very clearly too late. Regarding self-cannibalization, the worst-case scenario, at any time of writing from 2016 to the present in 2021, for a large auto player like BMW, Ford or Toyota, is to launch a price-competitive BMW, Ford or Toyota-branded full-autonomy prepped EV, comparable to a Tesla Model 3, with relatively limited Tesla-like production capacity, choked in particular by available manufacturing capacity of battery cells, when compared with the ability to produce engines. Like the Tesla Model 3, such an offering from BMW would present a compelling market alternative to internal combustion vehicles, vehicles that these OEMs have existing capacity to produce by the millions of units annually, and the necessity to sell in such volumes to sustain its vast, fixed overheads. Hence, in return for a shot at spoiling the advance of Tesla, and any additional newcomer, while such businesses are still comparatively small and confined to a single-digit percentage niche of the auto market, the definite and most significant outcome for BMW, Ford or Toyota, would be to tacitly invite millions of its potential customers via its own brand communications and sales channels, to line up for the spoiler and to strand the majority of its production assets, while lacking the ability to supply the spoiler. Simultaneously such a move would put BMW's shareholders and lenders on notice that BMW's core assets were officially stranded by management fiat, its lease and loan fleets obsolete and its past income streams no longer applicable to its future earnings. Blue chip status, terminated damage to Tesla and any other pure play newcomer in the new technology, likely trivial to none. Note. There is a crucial distinction between the Tesla Model 3 and electric vehicles presently made available by internal combustion OEMs at a distinct price premium to their otherwise identical internal combustion equivalents, essentially electric vehicles sold to satisfy brand loyalists or locked-in fleet customers who nonetheless demand an electric vehicle, or to satisfy regulators and to collect incentives. The Model 3 and Model Y customer value proposition is designed to compete freely and maximally with internal combustion vehicles, across every addressable metric of price, equipment and performance, while the electric vehicle offerings of internal combustion OEMs are specifically designed not to. Instead to avoid direct competition in every instance, where the customer will accept an engine. Increasingly, electric vehicles from internal combustion OEMs are produced on the same modular vehicle platforms. A modular vehicle platform is intended to make an assembly line adaptable to an unforeseen mix of demand for electric vehicles, internal combustion and hybrids, by allowing for the installation of different drivetrains in the same vehicle. In all cases, the electric vehicle variant is offered at a distinct price to customer value disadvantage. Not realistically on account of marginal cost differential, cost of batteries and motors net of the cost of engines and all of their subsystems, but rather the cost of self-cannibalizing the entire business, were the electric vehicle to be sold with competitive specifications at a competitive price. This is the generic economics of technology disruption that every auto executive is, or should be, well aware of. While it would be a possible shorthand to treat a prognosis of total market disruption as outcome determinative on the first pass, we should scout for key player iteration loops, meaning credible avenues to counter a known threat of technology disruption available to expert auto industry managers. We will take a look at these now. There is an opening on the horizon for the total auto market to expand significantly, precisely because of the technologies advanced and championed by autonomous EV newcomers, 
like Tesla and pursued simultaneously by all major vehicle OEMs. If a profitable market expansion were to proceed rapidly enough to support overheads and restructuring costs, this might provide an avenue of escape from disruption. The fine calculation on this point comes down to speed to market to launch a corporate autonomous fleet, at sufficient scale and profitability to carry the balance of the business through restructuring. Weight in the balance it would appear likely on account of specialization and vastly superior access to external growth capital, that market expansion afforded by shared autonomy will be achieved first and at more attractive margins by newcomers generally and by Tesla specifically, joined in due course by well-heeled newcomers, such as perhaps Apple, who have some core skills of relevance and only a blue ocean of opportunity, with no automotive restructuring costs to navigate. What remains of access to internal, governmental and external growth capital for large but legacy auto players will likely be insufficient to sustain most of the current crop of dominant auto players, at least not in any recognizable form either in terms of ownership or by type of products produced. The considerations are relatively complex and the reader is invited to take a view on these. A synopsis of both the challenges and possible solutions are explored in depth in the coming chapters. What is fine to state in the definitive is that the current majors, do not have to survive. That is not a fixed reference point around which all the other pieces must fit. This is a simple but indescribably important observation. Nothing pivots on what traditional auto brands are willing, able or can be persuaded to produce. In other words, what large automotive players like VW and Toyota or the auto industry as a whole announce they are willing to do and by what date they are willing to do it, following sage and serious negotiations with industry regulators, is likely absolutely irrelevant to outcomes. The market will not wait for their plans to unfold at their leisure. By far the most juicy opportunity in connection with the auto market, is for newcomers to target legacy auto industry market share, while the latter is hidebound in low-margin mutually entrenched competition in an essentially obsolete 100-year-old technology, that will cost a fortune to get out of. Thus heavyweights though they may be, prior to navigating a way out of dependency upon volume sales of internal combustion vehicles to make payroll, legacy players can't lay a glove, at least not above the beltline, on the advance of high-tech competition without punching themselves in the face. Both large and small auto companies are in conversation, with the customer preferences of many more millions of people than either size of company, large or newcomer, can immediately supply. Overall market choice between the products and services of large and small companies, is essentially a simple binary. So long as an auto manufacturer is thought to be substantial enough to meet warranty commitments, the difference in manufacturing scale backing the purchasing decision between one car or another, is far more interesting to the auto industry than it is to the customer. Again, 400,000 deposited customers in 2016 were waiting in line for a new technology vehicle with zero capacity to supply their preference prior to 2018 while ignoring both vast available capacity and extravagant marketing outlay, with respect to the option of just accepting a new vehicle of the previous technology type that was readily available in superabundance on any dealer lot. This pattern has played out before on numerous occasions. It has even happened in the auto industry. More on that later. With the exception of 21st century newcomers to automotive manufacturing, the majority of items on the list above, and the supermajority by value, is situated in the supply chain, not within the brand name businesses of 20th century automakers, who in relation to predictable obsolescence of internal combustion, stand out as aggregators of fixed liabilities, and whose intangible assets such as brand equity and research and development talent, are indefensible from attrition. Currently by far the world's single largest concentration of items that are all on the list, by capital value and capacity, also by state of development and by state of systems integration by intelligent design, is within the business of Tesla Incorporated. Tesla is also the world's largest customer and producer of battery capacity and the second largest is not an automaker. Tesla in partnership with Panasonic is also set to dramatically outpace the rate of adding battery manufacturing capacity when compared to the rate of addition contemplated by third parties of any size and the second fastest is not an automaker. In the case of Tesla, This is a virtuous circle afforded by first mover advantage and the customer, and investor, response to its products and plans. This has enabled Tesla to invest with confidence and to attract the backing of external investors to build that capacity. While of course large 20th century automakers have very significant production capacities for internal combustion-based vehicles, 
and in some cases, most notably Toyota, strong cash reserves, none can demonstrate an EV program at similar scale or credibility to a battery maker, to justify partnering with it to deliver dedicated battery production capacity. Meanwhile the prospect of self-cannibalization, hampers shareholder support to divert profits and cash reserves at the required scale and with the requisite urgency to building battery production capacity and amounts representing more than a defensive play. From the perspective of a large battery maker such as Samsung SDI or LG, or indeed Panasonic, the urgency felt by an internal combustion-centric auto OEM to obtain vehicle traction batteries, in order to produce a vehicle to satisfy regulators or to counter Tesla, exceeds the urgency of any such battery maker, to form an exclusive partnership, or in any way to deconstruct an arm's-length customer-supplier relationship with the vehicle OEM. Defending a classic customer-supplier relationship preserves the battery maker's role as a primary profit center, and its freedom to maximize customer acquisition and to spread risk of OEM customer programs underperforming, while accumulating traction battery IP in its own right. The historic inflection point that ensured this outcome would unfold was in 2008-2009 with the survival of Tesla and the bankruptcy of GM and Chrysler in the USA. The remainder is simply trajectories, probability streams, that every significant player and metric has followed since then. As a consequence, Tesla is the de facto global automotive industry leader of the foreseeable future, measured in terms of years and low to mid-single-digit decades. This is as good as definitive in terms of industry direction. Tesla will probably emerge by default as the global market leader in terms of vehicle production volumes, too, even if Tesla does not fully realize it or expect that itself. Update, Tesla has announced publicly, that it is targeting a 20 million unit production rate. This is a very significant understatement of the demand Tesla will be obliged by market forces to supply in due course. The mechanism for that flows through the market dynamics of vehicle autonomy discussed in the forthcoming section, Dynamics of Autonomous Mileage Markets. The technology and market trajectory of Tesla cannot simply be discounted as an outlying data point on account of deference to experts, or the views of its competitors, nor unfounded public, or investor, incredulity. Tesla's 2012-2018 vehicle fleet size chart shows a perfect exponential vehicle fleet size trajectory. This isn't a curve achieved in the absence of adversity, skepticism or competitive pressure. A far greater and well-founded uncertainty pertains to the question of what unknown could possibly arise to keep Tesla's established trajectory of exponential scale of fleet gains, essentially an annual fleet doubling, from continuing to follow this trend indefinitely to market saturation. There was no tangible, credible and specific answer to this question at the first time of writing this in 2016, nor when updating it in 2019 as to what might present a barrier to Tesla and sister company SpaceX, becoming the 21st century's Ford, Standard Oil, Edison General Electric and Bell Telephone Company combined. Update 2021. The same trend continues undeflected and nothing new has presented itself. Neither imminently nor on the horizon. As at 2019, Tesla has completed the roof of its second vehicle factory and its first on a new continent, in China, for an additional 150,000 unit per year initial capacity ramping to 500,000 in short order and has floated the likelihood of announcing imminently a third, in Europe, announced its Model Y, Class 8 Semi, Roadster 2 sports car and a pickup truck, the Cybertruck, slated for production in an additional factory in the United States. Update 2021 Tesla Shanghai is approaching its 500,000 annual run rate and the site is expanding. Tesla Berlin and Texas are approaching completion of Phase 1 build and the start of production from both sites. Plus a 10 gigawatt hour per annum pilot plant for the Tesla 4680 cell is up and running in California. Sister company SpaceX has commenced deploying its global broadband service for amongst other natural applications, a proprietary backbone for global vehicle fleet networking. Update 2021 the service has thousands of satellites already on orbit and passed its first 100,000 beta users some months back. An image of the first 60 of thousands of SpaceX Starlink, Global Broadband, satellites. Launched May 23, 2019. Deployed, all 60 communicating. Credit, SpaceX. Survival of the 20th century auto industry is not on the critical path to the future of energy and transportation. 
just as it was neither the customer nor taxpayers concerned to convince Kodak to change its product lineup to digital imaging, there was no obligation to pay Eastman Kodak to help it retire its chemical film and processing assets, to re-emerge as the leading supplier of digital cameras. There is no reason for concern and no requirement on the part of the customer nor the taxpayer to convince or to pay the incumbent auto industry to change, nor to fund its restructuring costs, to emerge as leading suppliers of autonomous electric vehicles. Indeed there is no valid reason for the public to donate money to automotive industry owners and speculators at all. Ensuring the survival of Kodak was clearly not mission critical to satisfying global customer demand for digital imaging technology, a technology originating at Kodak. Ironically, but far from atypical in the history of poison pills. Consider the GM EV1 and Exxon's lithium disulfide battery in the context of this time-honored tradition. It may well be that McDonald's is well positioned to fund R&D for a product to cure fast food cravings, certainly far more so than it is well placed to bring it to market. Indeed in the case of Exxon's lithium battery, this was researched and developed by Exxon in the 1970s for a defensive patent, to prevent such a product coming to market. Conversely Tesla's move to open its patents to the balance of industry with a good faith clause, operates as much as a genuine accelerant, as a lure to swallow a poison pill, to train an expanded Tesla recruitment pool and to invest in assets of potential relevance to Tesla, in the event of a bankruptcy sale, as much as to trigger a bad faith countersuit, in the event of any litigious attempt to block market penetration of Tesla's vehicles. Despite disproportionate advertising presence, share of voice and political influence accumulated over decades by the incumbent auto industry, paying the added price of restructuring OEMs via a fresh round of bailouts or by a combination of taxpayer subsidies and customer premiums on its electric vehicles, is not mission critical to the customer nor the taxpayer, nor even a particularly relevant issue to solve outside of the boardrooms of these companies. Whereby saving typically a less than a Netflix worth of shareholders from taking losses, again, on GM's publicly traded stock, when most of those shareholders could simply divest if they wanted to, is just not society's problem. As alluded to in a previous chapter, the greatest barrier to simply dropping stagnant stock facing market disruption in GM and Exxon for example, and investing in Tesla or the future more broadly, is government insistence on charging tax upon realizing decades, if not generational capital gains. Thereby wiping out years if not decades of dividends. This is the heart and soul of investment and pension fund entrenchment in legacy polluting industry. A government that was actually serious about the environment or revitalizing the economy for their citizens, would do well to get out of the way in this regard. Cross subsidies, from internal combustion profits to loss making short run EV production, aimed at hampering Tesla and other newcomers is no defense, either. Not only is this concept an antitrust suit in the making but it is counterproductive, backfiring primarily on the host brand in terms of losing profitable sales to its own cross-subsidized product and simply accelerating margin attrition. There is no EV market in the eyes of the customer. There is a market for independent transportation that a vehicle can either satisfy, or not on a case-by-case -case basis, a case that is won marginally by the EV in relation to other new vehicles of similar type and performance in the owner-driver setting, and dramatically across the board in the autonomous fleet setting, as we shall explore. Hence, given that the mission-critical objective is, and industry-wide it is acknowledged to be, to produce a fleet of ultra-competitive fully autonomous vehicles operating within a shared transportation network, then simply investing in that, as cleanly and directly as possible to develop fresh production capacity, operated by management with a clear and undivided focus, without any restructuring costs or self-cannibalization issues to contend with, is very obviously a more attractive way to deploy capital, and a far more inspiring use of engineering and management resources, than trying to rescue a particular company or vehicle brand, that rose to preeminence in a preceding technology epoch. The future direction and pace of change in the auto industry is no longer in the hands of the traditional auto sector, or its regulators. It is in the hands of the customer, the independent investor, the inventor, the entrepreneur and the courts in the event of commercial or regulatory obstruction of new technology choices, that demonstrably reduce customer harm in terms of cost, and demonstrably enhance public safety, with copious data to prove it. We will now witness the unstoppable advent of fully autonomous electric vehicles. A regulation-averse, pro-growth, pro-energy independence, pro-infrastructure, pro-manufacturing, 
pro-localization of jobs, pro-balance of trade U.S. administration is, very counterintuitively for many observers, a significant tailwind in this direction. Update 2021, and indeed it was. With the successful launch and production ramp of the Tesla Model 3 and the Tesla Model Y, and the establishment of the aforementioned factories. In the same vein, the Chinese government lowering the JV drawbridge to U.S.-owned auto manufacturing, in the case of Tesla, to seek to pioneer harmonious Sino-U.S. relations in tandem with the European penchant and the Chinese urgency for sponsoring emissions reduction projects, to reduce oil imports and to quit choking on fumes in cities in varying order of priority, tailwinds all. Tesla Gigafactory 3 Shanghai. June 2019. Groundbreaking ceremony, Bare Earth, was January 6, 2019. Locally produced product pricing and reservations launched mid-2019, first local production at this site anticipated end 2019. 2021, Tesla Shanghai has produced 300,000 vehicles, on track for between 400 and 500,000 vehicles produced.